We did it. We're at double digits. Episode 10, milestone has been reached. We're still going strong. Welcome back to the Fifth Quarter Collective. For everybody tuning in, please like, subscribe, and share. Guys, how we doing? Just Fantastic. jacked up. Fantastic. We are ready, ready for the draft spectacular that's about to come. This is episode 10. Congrats to us. Got to episode 10. Congrats to you guys for listening to episode 10. And we have something big in store. No, it's as I, I lost the vote. I wanted to do a 2025-2026 NFL draft preview. But the other guys thought it'd be a little more fun if we did two different drafts, um, both of which we'll explain here in a, uh, in a more, bit more detail. Um, but we'll dive into those two different things. First, we have to figure out with the snake draft, who gets what pick. And this, this is something that we've been anticipating all, all day, really trying to see, you know, who's trying to bribe me to get the first pick. We're going to do a fair random number generator so we can um, get that out of the way. But let me share my screen here and we can see who gets what. Whoa. So wow. we're on random number generator. One through four. What numbers does everybody want? Second is the best. I'll okay. Third is the best. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. I'll go four. Sure. And is this is and this is to choose your draft spot. Yes. Choose your draft spot. Exactly. Let's see. Okay. Bo, are you one then? Oh yeah, come on now. Okay. Here we go. Four. Oh, oh Jake. Fuck. Where would you like? To <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the fourth pick overall. So I'm gonna get the end there. Okay. That double up. Love it. You guys can keep your same numbers. Yep. Two. Oh. We'll go. Um. We'll go. We'll go with the second spot. Second spot. Okay. Yeah. Coleman, your two bows, one. Bo. Oh, I'll go one, one. One, one. That's where I wanted to be. Coleman, you get three. That's exactly how you wanted it. All right. All right. I like how that shook out. I'm just writing down who gets which picks. And are we going to start off with the all hate team first or the all glass team first? Yeah. Let's, let's preview this a little bit. We're going to be doing first the all hate team watch draft and Coleman maybe you can explain this and tee it up a bit for us for everybody that's trying to understand what we're doing the way this draft came to fruition was when Luke and I lived together we would watch the NBA and we talked a little bit on this um, during the Spencer Dinwiddie segment last week but um, the way this works is we would have guys who were must see TV to us who we loved to watch because they were horrendous whether it was guys like Dinwiddie not to give out names here, but I'm sure these are all on everyone's list. Jordan Poole, <laughs> Russell Westbrook, guys like that, who the public does not want to watch, but it's almost like for us a meme. So the way I took it and the way I think we're all taking is guys who we can't stand, who aren't very good, that we love to watch. So, for example, let's say like I, the Wizards must see TV for me because I love watching Jordan Poole uh, jack up 35 plus shots a night to go whatever it is, 10 for 35 from the field. You eat that stuff up. Um, but instead, you would not choose the Chicago Bears on Thursday nights because I'm not going to watch the Bears on Thursday nights. So you kind of get the point there. But that's the all hate draft. Exactly. And you should all understand there's been many of hours of prep work put into this, mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of deep thought. <laughs> And um, we've been looking forward to this all a week. So with that, Bo, you're 1-1. One, one. You're on the clock. All right, 1-1. One, one. I think this is a unanimous All-American hate team player. Adama Kinsu. Absolutely hated that guy. <laughs> I, think, I think he was great. I think he's dirty. If he's on your team, you love him. Anytime you play against him, you're like, I, the pulling guard gets this guy clean. I'm not going to feel any type of way about him. So one one's Nadama Kitsu. I think he was a dirty player. I think he was great at the same time, but I think he 
didn't care about hurting people and truly trying to take them out of the game. So one one's an Adama can sue. Yeah, especially Packer fans when he stomped on Rodgers. I mean that that cuts deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear you. I love the pick, Bo. Love the pick. We got Mr. Luke Fox at number two. That's right. So here in my war room, if you will, in my big board, I'm looking at uh, at number one. I'm I'm an absolute sicko GM, and uh, the h- player I hated to watch one of the, one of the players I hated to watch, and that is Draymond Green. As a Grizzlies fan, Draymond Green, he was just an absolute menace. It was basically like the WE every single night that they played, um, and I just you know prayed for his downfall every single time. So. With number one for the second pick of the first round, we're going with Draymond Green. I, love that. I actually love that pick. I yeah. love that. Great pick. I feel like you sniped me, but that's okay. We'll come back. We'll rally. <laughs> we're adjusting the, the big board as we speak. Hold on. <laughs> Third pick. I know I mentioned this a little bit uh, describing the segment, but I'm going to go Russell Westbrook for three um, as my first overall pick. How can you not be glued to him? Coming off the bench – giving you big minutes can't score for shit but he's just the ultimate hustle guy who won't let your team win how do you not want to watch a guy like that just to see what he does night in night out and his time with the lakers i mean that was a must-see television of like why isn't russ starting tonight oh what's russ doing off the bench did he go did he shoot over 10 we got to find out and see <laughs> so oh, Russell Westbrook, i love that pick one for me I love that. That's that's a great great pick. Um, now he's on Denver. I mean, Jokic teaming up. Is it, yeah? I guess he. How is that gonna go? Well, am I am I the only player so far who's been bought out by the Utah Jazz twice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Good pick. With the fourth pick, this one this one is you may have not heard of him, but if you're a Badger fan. My fourth pick, Joel Stave, quarterback on the Badgers, <laughs> almost a decade ago. And in some ways, very frustrating because he couldn't throw the ball extremely well. In other ways, though, I mean, we were starting the Joel Stave for Heisman campaign and really pumping him up. But man, oh, man, was that frustrating when it got down to the Badgers being behind and him having to make any type of long pass. Um, so that was that was my first pick there. Probably not one on many other people's lists. The second guy, I have, yeah, Coleman. I know you did. I know I didn't. I didn't snipe anybody though. That's okay. I think that this other guy little, though. I'm, I'll just say I think that might be a little bit of a reach. Like one <laughs> four round one. Personal this, vendetta. Yeah, this not next like one. Mel Kiper or anything. I think you could have a little bit. <laughs> You can have more value four. If Joel Stave sees this, come on the pod. We'd like to talk it out. I, hey, this next one's not going to be a reach, and I'll tell you why. He's the ultimate workout hero. It's Ben Simmons. Oh, I yeah. will tune in. I bought into the Ben Simmons hype. He's Magic Johnson. He's, you know, a 6'8", great point guard who can do it all, all for him now to just miss games be a malcontent on whatever team he's on and for some reason only able to hit outside shots when he's in pickup games during the summer. It's frustrating and you know, I hate to watch him at the same time though. I'm always cheering for him trying to be like start shooting those threes and knock them down. It's it's just I think we'll look back at him always being one of the most puzzling failures within the NBA well, with how hyped up he was to some of the things he just can't overcome. I don't know if it's psychological or just when he's in an NBA game, he just can't overcome them. But that would be my uh, fifth pick there. That's a good pick. That was on my big board for sure. (laughs) Um, For pick six, we're going to pander to the Wisconsin fans up north and the Bucks fans. We're going to go Thonis onto Tacoma. Um. You are, you're telling me you're not glued to a, it's a Bucks blowout. They're up 35 <laughs> bucks, eight minutes, six, eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Who's going in the game? His younger brother, Thonis. What's he, what's he doing? Three rebounds, eight turnovers, one dribble ball off his foot, and four personal fouls. 
<laughs> and then you get the clips on Twitter at the end of the night. Found his guy into the game. See what he did. <laughs> it's another, again, another walking laughing stock. So I'm going to go Bron- Thonis for my second pick. Thonis is- and Russell Westbrook. We're, we have a very formidable team so far. Is Bronny stealing the spotlight from Thanasis? No. no? Okay. Never mind. We'll say that. <laughs> wait, wait till the season starts. <laughs> Get some legitimate minutes. <laughs> I heard he and also both my players have demanded multiple trades. Um I did I think I saw Thonis demand a trade. <laughs> I don't know where he's being traded to, China, potentially. <laughs> Shanghai <laughs> Sharks calling. Be. Shanghai Sharks. Mm-hmm. He and Pat Bev should uh, they should team up. I heard Pat Bev signed a deal with uh, like an Israeli team maybe. Something yeah. like that. Anyway, with pick number seven, that comes to myself here, and we are going to pick Rudy Gobert. Mm. And, uh, you know, I think um, Rudy Bo- uh, Gobert, for me personally, was always a hate watch. One, he killed the Grizzlies, as I, you know, there's going to be a theme here. But we can also, you know, let's blame him for shutting the world down. Let's blame him, you know, having fun fun there with the, the press conference with all those reporters. We'll blame him for that. So we we do not like him, but on our team, we love him. That's a good pick. I actually really like that. I think Lucas also points for uh, giving the world, giving sports fans misery for (laughs) yeah yeah five plus months. Yep, that's a very good pick. Absolutely, great pick, Luke. Thank you. Pick, Pick eight, and picking the guy who believes he is a system wherever he goes, but is too out of shape to run up and down the court. That is James Harden. Probably the worst defender in the NBA. Doesn't try at all. And I just think he's lazy. Not a fan. Obviously, he can score. Now that the rules have changed, he's not as effective as his pump fake foul. Let's shoot 40 free throws a night as he was. Harden's he's good. I just think uh, he's lazy. Don't think he's going to help. And when Giannis had the opportunity to pick him on the All-Star game, he said, in quote, I want to shoot the ball. So that should tell you everything you need to know. And then snaking back the other way, staying with the NBA roster, Anthony Davis. I am not a fan of AD. I think he's soft. I think he just gets eaten up down low. I always feel like people think he's going to be better than he is, and he underperforms usually. I know in him and LeBron United, everybody thought this was going to be a great duo, and he's been at best Robin to LeBron's Batman. So that's my two cents. I love that. I love both those picks. They were both on my big board. Those, uh, Yeah, Um, you definitely... You definitely got us with those, Bo. Yeah. Those are really I had to get them out there. I think AD is going to be a popular name tonight. Yeah. Especially I think so, I too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sneak <laughs> peek. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right. For the next pick, I'm going to go with my guy, Poku. I don't know. His last oh, name is Pokachevsky. Yes. I, couldn't, I could not pronounce his first name, so we'll just – you know, with respect to his family, so we don't butcher it, uh, it's Poku. But, you know, in, in me and Coleman's days of uh, rooming together uh, and watching the league, watching Poku and just being like, man, what is this guy's role? And what he's so skinny. Like, he was skinny before, like, even, like, Chet or, like, you know, Wemby came in, and you're like, this guy's going to break. But also, I, I was like, this kind of, like, not to, you know, make fun of him too much, but if you've ever seen Star Wars Episode Two. On the on the planet Camino, we thought he would look up. He looked a little bit like a Camino, and so um, we love Pico, uh, We love Poku. Poku I did not see that coming. I, I love that. that. I hate <laughs> catching strays. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Poku. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish out my uh, my with my backcourt right here. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go Spencer Dinwiddie. I know we spoke a lot about him last week. Um, I want to pick him over Jordan Poole solely because of Poole's time with the Warriors. Um, he did change a little bit for that team to win a title, and then he kind of let loose in Washington um, and his last year with Golden State. Um, did what he's been the same guy throughout his entire career. Um, it doesn't matter. He's taken the last shot. The other team could have Luka, or his team could have Luka. It could have LeBron. It could have Curry. He's demanding the ball. Whether he gets it or not, he's still demanding the basketball. So I'm going to go Spencer Dinwiddie to round up my backcourt. Are, 
So you're excited to see him demand the ball from Luca and Clay and Kyrie and oh yeah, run, run I think Dallas. Dinwiddie takes the final shot. In his mind, he <laughs> can take the final shot. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Awesome. At um, yeah, Dinwiddie there. I'm gonna go with for the twelfth pick. Uh, I'm gonna go with a guy who's very popular right now, but for many reasons I really dislike, but kind of hope he does well. Caleb Williams, USC quarterback. Hate the painted nails. I've never seen a good quarterback with painted nails. That does bother me. Um, He naturally gets drafted to the Bears. You see him being very emotional on the sidelines, and and it's just kind of odd in all respects. And so he... He's someone who's super talented, who I really do think, if I'm taking my Packer bias out of it, will be an amazing quarterback. But at the same time, I hope he always loses and at the same time kind of flames out. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But not not someone I've enjoyed. Um, the next pick is... Mm, I, I think I'm going to go with Carl uh, Anthony Towns. And he's a guy who, again, all sorts of hype around him, has had an okay NBA career, but I don't think has really ever played to the standards that everybody thought he would. Um, And so it's cool when you see him get in there and uh, with Ant being on the team now, taking some pressure off of him, but really just kind of dislike his game and how underutilized um, he is with lack of rebounding and and a lot of other areas within his game too. So I'm going to go with Cat for the that pick there. Do you think he's a crybaby? Um, yes, but I think Caleb Williams is more of a crybaby. Is your fingernail too- take like you're comparable to um, the backwards hat take of uh, um, uh, Cowherd. Um, Cowherd? Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred. Hey, all I'm going to say, Jordan Love doesn't have his fingernails painted. He's all business. Watch when they hit the field. Gonna be, gonna be disastrous for the Bears. Now, for my fourth pick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step a little bit out of the box here, and you can correct me if you don't, if you guys don't want to take this, um, I'd be completely okay. Um, I have players to back this up. However, um, I'd like to take any Kentucky basketball team in the NCAA tournament. They're going out, <laughs> round of 64 round of 32 to some mid-major since 2012. Um, no matter how many stud freshman draft picks Calpari has at Kentucky, had at Kentucky, he's no longer there. They are must-watch that first weekend because they're either going to get upset, it's going to be a close game, or he's going to say something dumb. And I would like to include Coach Cal and his Kentucky team in the NCAA tournament as pick number four. Is that okay if I choose player I, and team? Or I, do you want me to choose an individual person? I, th- I think we just lost all of our Kentucky fan base right there, Coleman. I think you burned that <laughs> I don't think we had much to begin with. <laughs> I, you know, they wanted, him. They, he, they, he, they wanted him out of there so bad after they lost to Oakland. I like it. I'll accept that. I, I love yeah, that. I think that's that's a little bit of a zag. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, make it a little different. All right. Next up. On my team, we're gonna stick, uh, keep, keep it up with the uh, the NBA here. As Coleman can probably already um, kind of guess here where I'm gonna go with this. But my next pick for this fourth round is THT, Talon Horton Tucker. He'll give you a solid nine, <laughs> nine uh, when he plays. His full size is very minuscule, um, but when he does, he'll play his he'll play his mind out. Um, I think I first became in love with this player. Um, I think it was the 2020 um, Lakers team, maybe. I think he was on that team. It was it was that moment where I was like, this guy, I want to be this guy's fan. That's amazing. That's great. All right. Do you think, do you think it's? Do you guys think it's a theme that we have a lot of ex, yet and current Lakers on our list um, yeah. from Russell Westbrook? <laughs> to Dinwiddie, to Anthony Davis, um, and THT. Do you think that's a theme? We have a lot of uh, current former Lakers. 
And not to give a little insight into my next pick, maybe another former Lakers. <laughs> I I do think it's. I mean, do you think it has anything to do with us not being Laker fans and them being an easily hateable team? The Lakers are my. If I had to, if I generally had to pick a team as my ultimate hate watch, oh my, it's the Los Angeles Lakers. They're my number one hate watch team in sports. There might be more teams with hate hateable people, but I think the amount of games that I've watched as a uh, you know just a non Lakers fan, uh, yeah, you can definitely see a lot more. But yeah, I don't know. I get that. All right, going back to the old NFL. This guy, thirty player, Montez Perfect. I did not mm. like Montez Perfect. I think he was an absolute. Dirty player. I mean, he basically killed several people on the football field figuratively. And Juju Smith-Schuster did get him back, though. Juju did back back him up. He was a dog. And zagging back the other way for round five, which is the last round, I believe. Correct? Yep. Yeah. Five rounds. We go with one of the victims of Fontes Perfect, who definitely suffered the hammer. Uh, A.B., Antonio Brown. This dude is nuts. And ever since he kicked that punter in, a, in the face on the punt return, I haven't really been a fan of him. But entertaining to say the least. So, I mean, obviously quitting halftime of a Jets game as a Buccaneer is a it's quite the way to go out. But that dude just all hate. I mean, I didn't really care for him. He was obviously good, but not a big fan. I like that bow. Do you like his second career? <laughs> say it again. Do you like his second career? Which is? C-T-E-S-P-N on Twitter. Uh, his X account is absolutely electric. I love tuning into that thing. It's just insane shit every day. Insane. I, not to interrupt, but for anybody that wants to see more Vontez Perfect, yes, some bad hits, maybe a little helmet to helmet contact, but the here comes the boom highlight clips on YouTube, I watch that yearly. That's that's good. You can go see Josh Cribbs get knocked out like two three times uh, in within that video. Not saying that's good. You know, head injury is not great, but that was real football. Okay, I'm sorry. I I, I digress. Luke, run to you. All right, for my last pick, number five, I'm actually veering away from the NBA. I'm actually going to the Major League Baseball and the Baltimore Orioles, actually. And, uh, well, he actually is not on the Baltimore Orioles anymore, but uh, this this guy, I kind of jokingly followed this man because he's the worst. He was the worst player on the team. This man is Runet Odor. I think um, when I first saw him, I thought his name said Rough Ned, and so I'm really dumb, and so I thought this guy was someone to follow. Um, but, you know, you kind of look into him a little more, and you look, his most famous scene, I guess you could say, was when he was on the Rangers, and he sucker punched the dude. So yeah, this guy, he'll fight for your team, you know? He'll be that guy that when your, t- your team gets, you know, technical foul, he'll be like a Dylan Brooks type character, but yeah. He, he, he's the glue that you need on the team. So I can attest. Runetto Dorp. Yeah. <laughs> I can attest. Let's, let's just say hypothetically, you get your he – always, he always batted ninth. Um, you have your seven and eight guys on second and third with two outs. All you need is one hit. A little bloop single to bring both runs in. He'd strike out. <laughs> Innings over. Two left runners in scoring position. He's that kind of guy. Needless to say, he doesn't play in the league anymore. No, he's not. <laughs> that seems like a shock after what you just told us. Yeah, absolute shock. Well, he, in Baltimore, he was on the tail end of his career. He couldn't really help it. Um, <laughs> but he had a good, long MLB career. He, I think he lives in Texas on a ranch somewhere outside of Dallas. You can go visit him. has a lot of horses. He does. <laughs> Rube Nettador. I did not see that name coming today, and I like the pick. For my final selection, um, I'm torn between two NBA players. Um, I know I have a very basketball-heavy focus draft, and that'll change come the all-hate team. However, I think I'm torn, and I don't think Jake will take either of these guys. Um, I'm torn between Davis Bertans and Christian Wood. Wow. <laughs> I can't stand Christian Wood. Why continue that thought? Continue again, Laker. He was a bum on this past year's Lakers team. Um, he couldn't knock down a three. Um, he had all this hype, and he's so fucking cocky. And I get what what happened to him in Detroit, and his girlfriend broke up with him because he didn't get in the NBA. And then he had a nice career. I, I like good. I understand that. 
But with the Lakers, he was a bum. And then Davis Bertans, who is just one ugly ass motherfucker who can only do one thing on the court, <laughs> and that's shoot threes. Don't hold back. Tell us how you really feel about him. Don't and hold he'll keep check. It, you know, it's Davis Bertans. So I'm taking him with my last pick. He'll take threes that Lord knows he doesn't need to take. He thinks he's Curry. He can only shoot threes, and when he's when he can't shoot when he's when he's not on, he's when he's cold, he's cold. And he'll deliver nothing to the team. And he looks fucking weird with his, like, white beard and his, like, bigger... I, I don't want to, like, disrespect the man, but that was Bertans. Um, I, I, I don't want to disrespect the man, but I hate everything about him. I don't want to disrespect yeah, hate, him, but I he's, quote, an ugly he's, ass he's motherfucker. Build, and quote. The way he plays, his attitude, because he gets so fired up, too. And he gets... He doesn't play any defense. He's literally useless if he can't sit there in the corner three and make and knock that three down. Other than that, he's useless. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take Davis part time. In, in a predicament here, figuring out. I think this last one, again, not on anybody else's list, but I'm going to round out this draft by picking the Legion of Boom. Whoa. Back with the Seahawks. We're talking Cam Chancellor. We're talking Prime Sherman. We're talking the other safety who's slipping my mind. I think he broke his leg. Uh, Eric Thomas. Yep. Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Legion of Boom. By all means, I love defensive football. I loved watching what they did out there and how they would lay the hammer on any team that they were playing. At the same time, though, really hated what they did to the Packers. Like, just violated them in so many ways where it, it made me very sad and so again great squad great great thing they had going there but very painful to watch week in and week out of how successful they were so that'll round it out for the the uh, hate watch draft guys one question I, I had for you guys was if you had to choose your your graphic top three of your top, if you had to put this on a graphic <laughs> to determine like who's who's my who's the three stars of my team, what three what three people would you guys choose? Oh. As your graphic guys. Okay, all right. Out of the five we picked, you gotta pick three. Tell to us be who's like... in the center too. Who's your centerpiece? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. All right, you want me to start because I was first, I guess. It, it, it Go matter. ahead. All right, here. Yeah, here's draft just... order. The creativity that came to my mind, right? So we're going to have AD in a boot with his leg out, right? Perfect's going to be going sideways, helmet straight to AD's head. And then we're going to have the Dominican Sue stomping on AD's broken ankle. That's what I'm doing for my team, my all AD team. Yep, that's how I do my graphic. For my graphic, obviously having Draymond and Rudy would be cool. They get enough screen time, though. Who doesn't get enough screen time? Poku. So he's very front and center, okay? And then who do we have next? We're going to have Rufnet Odor or Runet Odor, okay? And then on the other side, we are going to have our good friend, THT. And that's our three. Solid team. I don't know if we're winning any <laughs> games, but it'll be fun to watch. Me, we're going to have Thanis as the centerpiece um, sitting on the bench. So him in a chair. <laughs> Um, and we're going to have Russell Westbrook to his right side yelling at the referee, like bent over. Why? How is this a foul? Well, you hand checked him. You can't do that. Um, and then we're going to have Davis Bertans with his mouth open so you can see his teeth and his <laughs> fucking beard. You're going to get like a side profile of him. <laughs> Just catching strays like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 but I love to watch him though. I, every, anytime he gets on the floor. I'm, I'm glued into Davis Bertans. I'm not even watching the ball at that, but I'm seeing how much he moves off ball. Timing how long he's staying in that corner. I think my three, I think I'd go Simmons, like shooting in like one of his workout videos. I'd clip that. I would then go with, um, I'd probably have to go with Cat also, just like, I don't know, maybe Cat something lazy or him complaining or just looking sad or something along those lines. And then honestly, I'd probably go Legion of Boom. You can't really fit all those guys on there. So maybe it's just Pete Carroll and like throw people off. I don't know. I like think that. that would be my graphic. 
That's a good graphic. Great question, though. Great, great question. That was a good, good curveball. Good. What do you? Well, I don't know if we should do this now. How do you guys feel about your teams, though? Who do you think won the draft? If if there was a winner, Mine's, he uh, really did reach for Joel Stave. Yeah, Joel <laughs> yeah, Stave <I> caught a. <laughs> he hasn't been talked about in sports for five years. <laughs> yeah, you really reached on that one. Hey, number one draft, number one rule in any draft: get your guys. <laughs> You got him. Ain't nobody trying to get him. That is all you get. Him as an undrafted free agent. I would. Yeah, I would have given him to you if yeah. you wanted a sixth person as an undrafted rookie. Take him. Might be. Might be worse than my Runed Runed pick. That one. That one came mid draft. That one. I was. I was. Uh, that came. You know, from the dome, uh, from literally nowhere. But I'm glad I picked him. I. If If I had to vote, gosh, there, there's really good teams. I don't know. I don't know who. would technically win here. I, Coleman, I really do like your picks, though. If I couldn't choose my own, I would choose Luke. Yeah. Just yeah. because we have a lot of the similar sentiment, similar watches. Mm-hmm. The um, Poku really threw you head and shoulders. Above the Poku was else. a good one. That was a really good one. THT I, was a that was a good pick. I That was a hard Expected. That came from a good place. I do really, the one I really appreciated who, for some reason, I left off my list was James Harden, too. That Great. I don't know how he dropped down to eighth overall, but I guess that's what you get when guys are drafting Joel Stave for. So, yeah. Yeah, hey. <laughs> what do you do? What are you going to do? Awesome. All right. Anything else, the guys? same order. Sorry. Go ahead. Any closing thoughts on the all-hate team? No. That was awesome. Super fun. All right. We can now switch over to the all-glass team. And so for this draft, the premise is – guys that are just it's not who's had the worst injuries or anything like that it's who's just always on the sideline who's always injury prone and that you know that that really bugs us obviously for any sports fan is seeing people in street clothes um not playing and yeah what do you guys want to do is you, you guys want to do the same order you want to flip it so it's inverse what, what are you thinking well i'd like to just give a little historical fact um let's do it the reason why this draft came to be is like I like um, Bo took earlier with Anthony Davis, um, this draft is solely because of Anthony Davis. Um, we Luke and I always called him Anthony Glass Davis or <laughs> um, Street Clothes. So this whole draft is modeled because of Anthony Davis. Um, did you guys all have AD on your lists? Yep. Uh, I do believe he is uh, towards the top. Yes. <laughs> let's just have him as let's just put him as like the league the general manager the owner of this league is ad so we yeah. can't draft him he's the one auto pick yeah a- auto pick it's the free a- space on your bingo card yes yep. ad would be the one announcing these picks right <laughs> yeah i i like that because he was okay. he was round one pick one for me yeah okay. and i, think- I like it i like it do you guys want to do the generator again or you just want to do inverse or keep the same order what do you want to do uh-huh. Yeah, I don't care. We can keep the same or go inverse. Let's just keep the same. Yeah. Awesome. All right. right. I'll start it off. 1-1 has been quoted by Kobe saying that if this guy was healthy, he could do everything I can do and better, and he's three or four inches taller. Tracy McGrady. I think he could have had a great career, but obviously was hurt so much that it kind of failed the launch. We'll just say phenomenal player. Kobe even was just head over heels for him about how good he was and that he could do everything Kobe could do it better. 1-1, one, one, I think. Tracy McGrady, all the last team. Quick quick question, Bo. Was your first NBA game Bucks rockets And was T-Mac out? Uh, Yao Ming was on that team. Yao, Yao was there. out. Didn't Yao oh. have a foot injury? I think so, because I remember... Well, I don't know if that was the first, but I remember I saw Yao Ming, yeah. and then... I also remember this probably the same game, Earl Boykin in the purple uniform. We had like 5-3 Earl Boykin. That's classic. <laughs> that's, that's purple Bucks uniforms, too. Purple Bucks. I've been a fan. Love purple it. Bucks unis. If you haven't been around since then, where have you been? Yeah, so. love it. All right. Sorry, Luke. You're on the clock. No, no. No, no. It, this is an easy pick. He fell to two. He fell to two, people. We're taking Anthony Davis. Mr. No, Glass himself. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't take AD. Have to, why not? That was the <laughs> point. We just agreed. We just agreed you can't All take right. him. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. 
He's got to rethink. Can we go with He's Clay Thompson? Is yeah. Clay Thompson yeah, suitable? A good uh, yep. Having having ACLs taken out, I think I like that. that just is is part of it. He had to switch to a new team because he just felt disrespected. I don't mm-hmm. know. That's a good one. This is a big pick because it sets the tone of do we continue just going basketball, and that or do you change it up? And then hope Jake doesn't go basketball with his snake pick. But I'll change it up. Um, I'm going to go. Has anyone? Well, Luke's taking a baseball player tonight. I'm going to take Mike Trout. Um, probably one of the, if not the best baseball player who has never played in a playoff series, who plays for the Dog Shit Angels, and just cannot stay on the field at all. Injury after injury after injury. And he's still one of the best baseball players in the world, probably of all time. You're not wrong. That was a good pick. That was good a one. really good pick. That's a good one, Coleman. Really good one. I um, he was not on my list. So Could have been not, a reach. Could have been a reach. Not but me. Like like Jake said, you want to get your guys. But I think you might be sad because my first two guys are NBA players. Of course they are. So you might not love this. With the fourth pick. I'm going to go with the tragic, injury-prone career of Greg Oden. Oh, not the guy I would have taken, but I like it. Add him to the list of dominant college players that just couldn't overcome the injury hurdle and forever. Which, what will you think of when you think of Greg Oden? What could have been? So I, I think it's awful that his knees deteriorated. You see that with a lot of his big guys, but he was certainly one that stood out to me. This next guy is the epitome of of when I think of the word load management, I only think of this man. This was my pick. Kawhi yeah. Leonard. Same. On the board. I am I'm just so disappointed with how many games he misses. He doesn't ever play. He's off many nights within the season. That says it all. I just think, again, load management. I really didn't even hear about it until Kawhi was sitting out a bunch and he would be the uh, spokesperson for that movement. So I'm going to go Greg Oden and, and Kawhi. Well, I was Reynolds. right that I was torn. Him and Mike Trout. Um, I guess I should have taken Kawhi, but you live and you learn. Next off last draft. Now, I may go back to basketball here, I think. I'm going to take, and I, you know, I might just form an all white team um, <laughs> on top of. I'm going to take Gordon Hayward, who had one of the worst injuries of all time. But on top of that, he can't play. He has so many other injuries. And just similar to Mike Trotty, yeah, he's not one of the best players of all time. But it's he'll play six games, be hurt for six months. Play another 25 games, hurt again. Then he's on to Charlotte. Then he's on to Utah or like wherever the hell he is now. I'm going to go Gordon Hayward for Team like of All Whites. I like that. I like that. That's a good pick. Good pick. All right. For my second pick as GM for the greatest team of all time, of the of glass team, we're going to go and we're going to pander to the, um, the Green Bay Packer fan base here um, a little bit. We're going to pivot, um, not go NBA, but we're going to go David Bakhtiari. We never know if he's back or not. He's never back. He always has knee issues. You know? And he's a very – if he's going to have to – if he wants to play some legitimate minutes, he's got to get healthy. And if he wants to – if the Packers want to be a legitimate contender with their newly paid quarterback, he's got to be there, you know. Gosh, that's a, that's great, a great pick. Great, great pick. That, you definitely sniped me. He was on the list. That oh, you, You're yeah, right. That, that really hurts for, uh, for Bo and I there. So, right. That was a great one. Okay, sticking with the NFL, probably one of the shortest, most like high and low switches of an NFL career. Uh, Todd Gurley, talking about going from top of the mountain to bottom of the abyss in just a few years and out of the league. I think he's definitely on the all glass team, just given his inju- injuries and how people had such high hopes for him. And keeping it in the NFL, another person who out of college, star studded, everybody thought he was going to change and revolutionize the NFL, RG3 think 
definitely could have been pretty good. Obviously, he had the thing with uh, the Redskins and hurt his knee, and then whoa, you know, he's just... what team? <laughs> Back in the day, uh, the Commanders <laughs> used to be known as the Redskins. So, for anybody out there that's offended, please do your research. State historical facts. But yeah, RG three I think would be on the All Glass team for my third pick. I thought you were going to say, for anybody that's offended, you can kiss my ass, but. <laughs> <laughs> Great picks. Love those. Love both those. All right. So let's see here. For my third pick, I think I'm going to go with the great Derek Rose. Mm. I think, oh, my you know, he had a very, very solid beginning to his NBA career, had an excellent college career, but he unfortunately was stricken by injuries. You know, from his time toward the end of his Bulls tenure, then his Knicks, and then it seems like, you know, he's going to end his time here in Memphis. He may have already retired. I'm not sure, but he's definitely thought about it, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah, Derek Rose, absolute great pick for my team, but unfortunate career. Great pick. When you think basketball and you think of just the general history of the sport, and you think of the biggest questions of what ifs, what could have been if someone stayed healthy? Yeah, your mind may go to Greg Oden, but historically speaking, my mind is not. Historically speaking, my mind jumped back to 1977 um, of the Portland Trailblazers and Bill Walton. Bill Walton could have been one of the greatest basketball players of all time if his foot could stay healthy. He won two titles, one with the Celtics in 86, I believe, and the one with the Trailblazers in 77. The fact that he played 10 plus years in this league and he could barely walk is a testament to just one is an injury proneness, and two just his overall will um, and love for the sport of basketball. Bill Walton is in another addition to the All White team as well, so that's a pro. Um, but yeah, I I think Bill Walton is as pick three. That's good. Um, I'm not gonna lie, you snipe me there, so I'm I'm frazzled. Uh, don't love that. Um. I think with this pick, I'm going to go with the man who I think sprained both ankles at the same time in one game, <laughs> Mr. Carson Wentz. That poor guy, all the talent in the world. I love watching him. I always thought he was a bit underrated, uh, but obviously Nick Foles comes in and wins the Super Bowl. He's dealing with ACL tears. He can't really stay healthy, stay on the field. And again, I don't think I've ever heard of anybody one, spraining both their ankles on the same play. Like, that's disastrous. What do you do, jump off the third floor onto the field? And then also, the way in which he tore his ACL that one year where the guy, he was full out diving, and the other guy just hit him in the leg. That was very strange for how that happened. So Carson Wentz, definitely there, overshadowed by Nick Foles and, and the injuries that have occurred. This gets tougher. I think you stole Bill Walton. You stole Bakhtiari. Oh, boy. I don't know. This is probably recency bias. It's, I'm going to preface it with saying it's not the best pick, but I will say uh, Mike Williams from the Chargers, now in the Jets, always seems to be on the hour, always seems to have a tweaked hamstring. Actually, pause. I'm subbing Mike Williams for Alshon Jeffrey, who I think is a much better fit, who had a lot of those soft tissue issues, pulled hamstrings constantly off the field, and by the time he ended his career, um, was really just kind of a jump ball player who fizzled out because of all those soft tissue injuries. So I'm going to go Alshon Jeffrey. Sorry for the uh, switch up there, but much better fit. Mike Williams was on my board, um, but out of solidarity for you and your pick, I won't take him. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go another addition to the all glass, get all white team. We're going to go Andrew Luck who retired early because of injuries. He quit the sport of football because he kept getting hurt too much. And yeah, maybe not his fault. Uh, maybe he had a dog shit offensive line. 
but he did it anyway. So Andrew Luck is another addition. Gosh, how did I not think? Did anybody else have him on their list? I completely overlooked Luck. Great, great pick. That's yeah, that that's, be steal. That's, that's a deep steal. In what are we? The third round, mm-hmm. fourth, fourth round. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that, that's crazy. That that blew my mind there for a second. So good for you, Coleman. Thank you. Um, but for this next pick, my team, we're gonna take the great Zion Williamson. Um, and he he may not be out necessarily for injury. Sometimes he is, but this is due to a much larger issue, and that's his uh, unfortunate weight. My man can't put down the spoon, and you know, always going for seconds. You know, maybe if you just. Portion your have a little proportion control there. You might you might win some games in uh, in New Orleans. But Zion is my guy. I mean, he had to learn how to walk or learn how to run too. Like it's a, he's he's just he's just not not suitable, not reliable enough. But on my team, we're winning games. We're gonna we're gonna give him the we're gonna give him the help he needs. Um, I like how you said yeah. uh, preface it with a, a larger issue. Mm-hmm. That was good. Was good, good. Good wordplay. Good wordplay. Okay. Going to my two picks. First, changed how the NFL contract structures were made. Sam Bradford, one of the guys who didn't got a lot of money, didn't play a lot of snaps. And I think he was a sleeper that not a lot of people were thinking of on the all glass team. Second, has battled through significant injuries throughout his career is considered the goat of his sport yet has still performed at a high level despite these injuries tiger woods imagine how he would be if he were fully healthy his entire career even now if he didn't have to go through all these battles and surgeries if he'd be a much better golfer with a few more championships did you guys see his the picture of his leg without the sleeve recently my gosh it's a scar basically from his knee all the way down to his ankle it's just straight down. You can see all the stitching. and It's crazy he's still playing. Crazy he's still playing. Hats off to Tiger. Hats off to Great Tiger. Great picks. Great picks. I love the pick. All right. So the next pick and the last pick for my team, we're going to go with Joel Embiid, I think. That's a good one. With him being out every time in the playoffs, seemingly, you know, they don't they don't have they can't make that run that they should be. And we've talked about this multiple times in previous episodes about how you know, big men get injured all the time, but, you know, this is just another case of that. But I think, you know, he'll provide some – he'll be a great strength to my team. Um, and so with that, we're going with Joel Embiid. Great pick. I love that pick. Tiger Woods and Embiid, great late-round additions. They were both on my big board. Um, so very good picks. Final pick to round out the all-glass, all-white-glass team – is J.J. Watt. I think every year, well, he's now since retired. I think every year J.J. Watt was hurt at some point. Um, whether it was on the Cardinals, Texans, a shoulder, a knee. He was sad. I don't know. He, he didn't want to go to Houston. Didn't like playing for those Texan teams. I don't know. But J.J. Watt, the round at the all-white and the all-glass team. Great. Great. You're, uh, nah, I'm not going to make that joke. Okay, 20. Um, for pick 20, we are going to go with, <laughs> we are going to go with another former Washington Redskin. Uh, okay. Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed. Tight end, for those of you who remember, who started suffering some very tragic concussion issues, couldn't really ever stay on the field and would experience many Things like light sensitivity really couldn't be outside of practice at all, and ultimately um, that ended up ending his football career. So very, very sad to see there. Um, one guy I think that sticks out to me because I seem to always have him on my fantasy team those years that he wasn't playing at all. But that's how I'm going to round it out with Jordan Reed for the Redskins. Great picks. Great all-glass team, everybody. Great all-glass teams. Do you guys now have any honorable mentions who may not have been selected but were still on your big board? Chandler Parsons. Mm-hmm. He stole everything. I had one that was kind of a reach. I had Lonzo Ball. Yeah, I was going to say him. That's great. Yeah. 
I have uh, I have two base. We're, we're, we're jumping to baseball. I had uh, Jacob Degrom. Yep. And uh, Anthony Rendon, who I think just entered the IL again today. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like he enters the IL almost every day. Um, as soon as he gets off. But yeah, I I had those two guys. I had Bradley Beal. Exploited. Good one. I, I I just I can't stand it. Good one. I was I I also had. Um... Uh, Jazz Chisholm uh, from the Marlins. Now and, Yankees. Uh, Yankees. Excuse me. Now Yankees. Break and uh, uh, Stanton. That would be another one. He like he steps on first base or touches anything on the field besides DH and strains a muscle. So that'd be another one on there. Good picks. Those were some good drafts, guys. That was. Those are top tier. This is the type of content that people are looking for on midweek Wednesdays. We all know it. Yeah, I like the creative control. Everybody had like a their own kind of touch on I, the way they went with it, so it was I, nice. I want to throw these two out here that were two zags that I didn't have for the hate watch. I had Phil Longo's time for calling offense at Ole Miss when they had A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, where that was – Always quite frustrating. I think we had one of the lowest red zone percentages in the SEC, or in the entire country, actually. You always knew they'd line it up three wide and run like a, just like a little flare screen to the uh, running back, which never worked. And then the other one, I had Skip Bayless. I don't know. I don't know if you guys would have accepted that or not, but I, he's I obviously. It. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I would have taken that. He's obviously a fool. Sometimes it is entertaining to tune in. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, anything else going on in the sports world that you want to talk about before we wrap it all? Check-ins on your guys' dynasties. How we doing? Dude, it's a touchy subject. I'll go, I'll go first. I got fired from Temple after going 0-12 <laughs> on Heisman, okay? I got fired. And somehow I'm at Fresno State. It's a better fit, I thought, okay? I'm now like 2-5, and five, and we're not doing hot. My running back broke his collarbone. We're not looking good. The recruiting trail's cold, to say the least. It's like the Oregon Trail back in the day. And that's really what's going on. It's, I, I was high hopes. I beat Washington at Washington, number nine on the road. Then I lost to number 12, uh, I'm blanking the name, maybe Oklahoma or something like that. And then, yeah, just been down, you know, Arkansas it was. Number 12, Arkansas. So that's my dynasty. How about you guys? Yeah, I, I'll say this. Dynasty is not going well. I've had to shake it. Uh, I've shook it up a little bit. And what I do now is I just play online against random people. I play as Air Force. I put Chew Clock on to start the game. And I just annoy them. So I'm taking a little breather. <laughs> it's not going well. And that's how I get out my frustration. So. All right. Uh, season one, Georgia State has offensive coordinator went five and seven. Um, second season hit hard the transfer portal. Um, we ended up finishing eight and four, um, and then took the Baylor offensive coordinator job. So we're now zero and one at Baylor, but we had a fantastic transfer portal where we brought in a couple five stars. Um, recruiting, we fit the trail hard, but we're zero and one. Lost to Auburn on the road, um, but we're excited to start a Big Twelve slate. And Luke, you you'll you'll chime in and jump in at some point yeah i'm still living vicariously through you guys so <laughs> give it about a month give it about a month and i'll be back i'll be i'll be a, be in the thick of it with you guys hopefully when, when luke gets nca what we'll do is we'll have a, a camera crew with him and he'll he'll compete with big cat for views of live dynasty seasons and, and his reactions alone would draw anybody in they'll have to be real mobile i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, I love that. Well, guys, awesome. Love the episode. We'll be doing more drafts like this. And I think we also talked about these next few weeks now. I know we hinted at it last time. We'll be doing the actual uh, college football previews and NFL previews. I think for college football, we might just do SEC Big Ten. And then um, we'll do some different divisions within the NFL leading up to those week's games. But really excited to start deep diving into some of those things and having broader discussions about what we what we think is going to happen. We will try not to let our Ole Miss bias uh, get
get in the way there, but it, it might a little bit. Well, guys, with that, thank you all for tuning in. Again, like, subscribe, and share. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday. Yeah, see you next week. Goodbye.